Hey, what's up guys? Uh, here with another video. And I just noticed yesterday, this is going to be my 50th video probably. So, I think it's been almost... I don't think it's been a year yet on YouTube, but it's been a while. It's been like, what, 8 months I think? I'm not sure. But the last video I did, I drew the Scarecrow. Still, still haven't replied to some of the comments. I think I got a comment or two on that one. But uh, this is where I got up to so far. I got some of the, most of the footage recorded for this, but I'm still gonna work on it. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna use some masking, um, paper, not masking paper, what's it called? That, that clear stuff you put on and you carve out so I could, like, do the background without interfering with the figure. But yeah, I'm gonna make another video to, uh, showing the process for the rest of that. Still not finished, because I gotta edit it. I gotta cut it up and stuff, because it was interrupted a lot. But, um, for this, I'm just gonna do some sketch and walk you through of uh, what I'm thinking and what I'm doing so uh, oh yeah but on the what's it called the last video the volume was a little bit down I'm trying to speak louder now all right the phone is closer to my head yeah I, I don't know if that's a good thing because the phone has radiation and stuff you never know put on airplane mode though when I'm recording I guess that lowers it I don't know all right but yeah I kind of just border up the outside of the paper as you could see here just so if I ever want to paint it that's where I'm gonna put the paint you know I'm gonna center it here somewhere because sometimes if you draw something right you go ahead and you draw it and uh, you want to paint it later or you want to like you know do something where you smear stuff all over the page and use a bunch of different kind of mediums or whatever you want a clean border on the outside you know you're gonna have to put tape right and if you put tape then you know what if the picture was kind of you know closer to one side of the paper than the other and it wasn't centered right and you know you just don't want to run into those problems so you know figure out a location where you want to draw and that's why i kind of box everything in do this real quick but yeah here i'm going to draw um i am playing some mortal kombat recently i mean not as much as i would like to but you know i've been playing scorpion a lot and i want to draw a scorpion real quick so i don't know what position or pose i should draw him in but let's make it something cool all right, let's just start messing around, see what happens. So I'm going to do is kind of thinking already that I should have him in this pose, like just looking up. So as you can see here, it's uh, going to have it curved like this because the face is going to be looking. I want to put it at an angle to make it more dynamic. So let's do that. I always like drawing the eyes, the, the eye sockets first. Because then it kind of puts the whole picture into play, right? Eye sockets are kind of like glasses. And it also positions the eyes correctly when you draw them. You know. Let's put the cheekbones in. I don't know what he should be doing in the picture, but we'll, we'll come up with something. I got an idea. So I'm gonna have him holding in, holding a dagger up here or something, the, the chain, spear. You know, these kind of, these sharp knuckles look cool, so I'm gonna keep them in there. I'll come up with a costume, so I don't really, I don't really remember how the costume looks like. The hand looks terrible. Yeah, we'll figure something out. But for now, I'll just draw the rest and see what happens. Let's angle that hand a bit. Kind of trying to imagine the shapes, you know, and 
that's the most difficult part when it comes to drawing. I'm trying to imagine the shapes in space. Once you get a basic idea of how you want the shapes to lay out on the page, then the anatomy gets easy because you can always just fit it in there. I really like the head, so I'm trying not to erase that. So I'll have like the body up here. You see the rib cage is going to be like that. So when you have the rib cage here, right, and the spine going through the head is going to be like that. And then the spine, we're going to have it twisted in this way because the hips are going to be here. See? Like, around there. It's going to be a dynamic shape because that leg is going to be coming forward. That leg is going to be back. Because when you throw a punch or do a really fast uh, motion or something, the body kind of torques, right? T-O-R-Q-U-E, torque, right? It's that thing where it's like rotational force, I think. I think that's what it means. Yeah. It creates more power that way, more stability, kind of, right? When the body turns like that. And so one thing I've been doing recently is when I draw, I don't have the full figure on the drawing anymore because I feel like that was a crutch out how I would draw the whole thing, right? And so like, now I'm trying to just like focus in, zoom in and see what happens. I'm trying to just, you know, try new things, see what happens. I'm gonna have the skull here or something. Have a lat the latissimus dorsi, right? That back muscle here. Yeah, so I don't think the the spear is gonna fit in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoulder here. Arm bone sticking out here, right? Shoulder blades go back when the arm goes back, right? Shoulder gonna be flexed, chest should be up. All right, and so the abdominals will be going down this way. Back muscle here again. All right, bicep stretched out because the hand, I mean the arm is going forward, right? Which means the tricep has to be flexed. So I kind of have it bulging here. Bicep will be like that, flexed up, and now we'll have the arm here. You know what, let's have the bicep flexed a little bit. Nice. Okay. Looks better than, a little bit better than before. And we can have... So, the arm will be up here, goes up here, the hand will be there. We can have... There we go. He could be, like, holding it or whatever. Right? And we could have the chain going around, so give it some flow to the picture. Boom. Now, I have that arm here, bicep like that. Maybe he could be pulling out the sword. Because the thing I like about Scorpion the most is, first of all, his moves are annoying. He could teleport and stuff, and but it looks it always looks elegant, you know what I'm saying? I really like the chain stuff, like in the old kung fu movies, where they would have that chain with the red feather or whatever at the end, and they'd be doing like those cool kick moves and stuff, and then the chain would be like flying and whipping through the air and stuff. Um, it's just cool stuff, you know? So I'll have the sword. You know, that it doesn't flow as good as I want it to. I think the sword would be... Because we kind of have this motion going here and going like this. So, you know what? Yeah, yeah, actually. Let's have the handle more than the sword. So that would have been a better thing. Because we don't want a line interfering with all this motion here. We just want a kind of a line that comes out from the bottom. Kind of just ends here so it doesn't interfere with this motion here. So it's kind of leading the eye in a... You know, it could just keep moving around the page. It's not too interfering. So let's have this over here. And remember, the hand, when you draw it holding something, right? You gotta make sure that, remember it's flat. So 
nobody the, the sword won't be there's something flat here so let's have this right right you won't hold it like I mean you can't hold it like that but if it's like a sword the handles thicker right so let me get something a little bit thicker than that uh, okay so this thing right it's gonna be safer to hold it like this rather than this that's just it's just gonna look st stupid so if you got it like that it's just better so yeah so just imagine that it's gonna be di not diagonal but the edges like that here Remember, the sword is curved, so yeah. All right, now what we're gonna do is kind of erase it, not erase it, but you know, do the rolling thing. focus on the face whoops something just snapped okay. I want the eyes to have a lot of emotion so I want to make sure that very wide open so usually from this perspective, you'd see the eyelid here, but because they're wide open, we'll have that fold here and we could kind of see the bottom, like they're kind of bulging out. And then since the, eye, the head's kind of turned, right, you see this eye socket here? So the eye would be, you know, if you had them as spheres, they would kind of be like that, right? And so if you draw the pupil and then you kind of see, oh, that looks, he looks a little... They look a little twisted out of shape, but whatever. So I guess I gotta fix it up, fix it up a little bit. All right, here's a little better than before. I haven't used this eraser in a while. Sometimes you gotta be careful. You leave an eraser out, it gathers all this humidity, and then it could like ruin your work sometimes, because it gets like really uh, what's the word? kind of looks like it kind of feels like a piece of leather and then it just smudges the pencil rather than erase all right now from bottom view the nose you know so i like to draw the whole face first Oh yeah, excuse the noise. There's somebody yelling outside. I don't know why. But yeah, before I draw a mask or anything, I have to draw the face. Just so I know where everything goes. Just so it doesn't look weird, you know. It's a funny looking head. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'll erase all that. I got the basic shapes so I know kind of how it's gonna look like. Now I wanna make the mask look like, you know, it's like, uh, not demonic, what's the word? You know, make it look scary.
All right. Now. Now, I don't know. I don't like giving that border around the mask as much. But let's test it out and see how it looks. You know what? Yeah, let's, let's give some kind of a helmet looking thing. Not helmet, but kind of an armored hood. See how it feels. Eh, not bad. Make it give it like a rough appearance. Kind of put a bulge here for the for the ears. All right, nice. Looking good, looking good. Kind of not feeling uh, too great about that part, but I'll come back and I'll fix it in the end. All right, time to work on the body. You zoom out. Zoom out and zoom in again. All right. So, now the body, got to make sure that the main shapes, well, we kind of have the main shape of the body established. Now, the main shape of the clothing is not established yet. Because, you know, clothing moves too. It doesn't remain stagnant on the body. Even heavy armor has to move. So, I have this one going around like that. Now, I want to give him, like, shoulder... Um, what's it called? Put like some kind of a fire pattern. And remember the perspective, like this part, this part of the body is kind of going up like that because the chest is puffing up and it's also an angle from the bottom. So we got to find a way to somehow, yeah, it looks like crap. We've got to find a way to somehow make it look more, uh, to emphasize it. Because the shoulders, you know, it's back there and then the arm moves out here. So. Kind of make it look segmented, so like it's pieces. Kind of have like a scorpion tail pattern. All right. I'll have that. The rest of the shoulder popping out from there. The arm. And for the hand, I mean for the forearm, kind of want like a basic uh, arm hand guard or whatever it's called. For the gloves though, I want to have like a a clean looking glove, kind of, but with these kind of sharp. Because it's got to be something that it's sharp enough to cut when he punches with. And at the same time, it'll be something uh, not too pointy where you lose balance when the punch lands. Because if that happens, you could break a wrist if, like, a glove is terribly made. So we kind of got these knuckles here. We, like, made out of bone or something. And, you know, just to emphasize the perspective. Because you could always... You, well, perspective is hard to do when you don't have something emphasizing it. That's why when you're drawn in perspective, it's always nice to have uh, clear shapes and stuff. Or you can just make up shapes to show it. Now I'll put the thumb here. Nice. Kind of want to make the, the hilt a square shape. And the reason for that, like I said before, emphasizes the perspective a little bit more. So yeah, here I'll draw the hilt and give it a little bit more of a curve. I don't want to get lost too much in the designing of the sword. I want to keep it basic. 
Now the hardest part about the katana is drawing that, um, drawing the hilt. I think it's called the hilt, right? The part here? No, that's the handle. No, this is the hilt. I forgot, whatever. Now here I'll draw the, that thing the sword comes out from. Give some kind of a pattern over here. Just some squiggles and stuff. Make sure the curve continues. And this curve continues. Kind of emphasizes a bit. Nice. All right. Give it some shadow. Still want to redo those knuckles. Probably finish it up uh, in the end. I want to put this in shadow here. Put like some uh, studded armor or whatever it's called. Here's gonna be, so remember the perspective kind of goes like that. Kind of try to match up the, these things, you know? Now, I think it would have been a good idea to leave the arms showing. Because when you do that, it kind of shows the muscles and it looks cooler. It looks tougher, you know. And where, wherever muscles intersect, you could always increase the amount of small, like, you know, um muscle parts or whatever the word is put a shirt hole here that's the back muscle like i said before then we'll have the belt here like this and remember since the perspective we're kind of looking at it from below kind of you, you want to make sure to leave that now we're going to have a skull over here because it'll look cool And it could kind of lead down into the that piece of leather that protects the groin area. And we'll have some fabric here moving forward. And this thing has to kind of meet in the back like that. You know, I gotta admit, it could look more dynamic, but since it's a short time, a short period of time we're drawing this for, uh, it's alright. I mean, it's just a sketch. I wanna have some texture in this type of fabric here, but we'll just color it in. Color in this. Have that tricep here. And then put that attachment for the for the hand or the forearm or whatever. Have some string in it or whatever. Once 
want this to look really sharp, so I want to have clean shapes. chains. Man, I hate drawing chains, but let's see. So the thing about chains is you just draw that the main shape and make sure it abides to this. Right? same time we can add some more chains but I really want to fix this part here in the bottom because it just looks like his body's going straight down and it looks like he's just standing straight up and it's kind of annoying me that there's no movement it doesn't feel so what I want to do is I'm going to bend have the waist bend a little bit so remember I said before when the body's moving the hips are going to turn so So I want to have kind of the fabric here going like that. I don't want to make the hips too big. It's going to look a little bit more feminine. So what I'm going to have to do is going to have to make somehow indicate that the waist is moving. So I could do that with the head that's on the belt. Alright, nice. Uh... And at the same time, since he is going to be have to... Yeah, yeah. So the problem before was, it didn't look like he was leaning forward. So I can change it like this. And then put that fabric here. Then put the studs in the, in the belt. Now let me zoom out and see how it looks. A little bit better, a little bit better. Alright, now... Just gonna add in some details because if I ink it in, that handle is gonna look, uh, you know, what's the word? I might mess up pretty easily if I ink this in. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna have to find a geometric way to do this because I want to make sure that it's even. I don't want. I don't like messing up on the katana handles because so, it look it looks obvious, and it looks crappy. So I'm gonna have like a line go down the middle of the whole thing and then create these lines here and then i'm gonna go through here it's the same way as trying to find like measure perspective kind of and then based on the curvature i'll i'll move the lines out right so let's do that and then see because of the curvature move it out here all right so now we kind of have this pattern going and then we just have these x's Wait a minute. Oh, my eyes are kind of confused right now. Okay, let me erase the lines I just did. All right, so here. Wait a minute. Boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm going to redo that again. <laughs> I had too much coffee today. My mind is racing, so... Should be more focused. Okay. Line goes through here. Make another line. Line goes through that one. Make another line. Let's kind of adjust it a little bit, just so we can know it's more, you know. Uh, man, I, I really don't know what I'm doing here, but we're trying something. Now we do the X's in each one. All 
All right. Now, this is where the more difficult part comes in. Yeah, I'm just going to use this eraser. Lift it up. Now, that's what I want to do. So, katanas, they kind of just... This fabric comes in, not fabric, or leather or whatever. And then it twists in the center. And then it goes to the edge. We still have to emphasize these shapes. Let me close in. Close up, I mean. Ooh, that's too much. Okay. Perfect. All right, so just keep repeating that pattern. And then try to also like clean it up, make it look a little bit better. So I'll make this side a little bit smaller than that side. Because remember, it's in perspective. Try not to mess it up. some cool looking patterns and stuff I like a small jewel in each one makes it look cool and also takes away from any mistakes that it looks like it has okay so now time for the ink I feel like the the pen I have here this one I've been using it for a long time so it feels like I have to replace the nib. So I don't know. I'll, I'll see. I'll see if it's still if it's still good enough. Let's see what happens. I think the ink kind of spilled out. Ah, damn it! Time to ink. So this is from yesterday. I don't know if it dried up. I hope it didn't because I had... I, so I put tape over it because I don't have a lid. And then I put a this, this small bottle cap on it. So it kind of seals it. So even if it tips over, it uh it doesn't spill too much. All right. Let's start with the head. Now these are very loose pencils, so... We're going to have to be very careful. Yeah, I think the the sides eyebrows should be a little bit shorter. I mean, uh, lower down, but whatever. Let's just make these a little bit higher and then go into the mask. Let's make this a little bit sharp. Lower that side with the mask a little bit more. See what so instead of going in with like um another round of pencils, what I like to do when I ink I just just kinda just go in and fix whatever I'm gonna fix the pencils with the ink. And I get that it's not as tight of a drawing, but this isn't something I really care too much about. Just drawing for fun right now. And also it gets you to think more about the lines that you're placing 
when you're replacing them with ink. So it'll help you out. And the thing is, like, uh, I'm not really going for really concrete shapes in the in the hood that he has and the mask and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over it with some uh, grayscale ink later, so it kind of just blends everything together, so it still looks dark. I like that nose design. Uh, trying to mimic the shape of the other side. So instead of just the regular nose, we'll have these things coming out of the nostrils here. And then like a kind of a vertebrae looking pattern coming down through the center. Add like these little bone, bone type looking things on the side. I promise it looks better when I zoom out. Maybe, I don't know, I haven't zoomed out yet though. Let's have these scorpion looking things from the side. Kind of like a bone looking thing here, connecting to those scorpion legs. And then we'll have like a ventilator looking thing over here. Also, um, I had a comment before, I forgot if it was on, I think it was on the stream, I forgot, but um, somebody said that they don't like using a pen like this because uh, it runs out of ink quickly and you can get more work done with like a technical pen, right? I mean, that's not wrong. I mean, it's not, it's not false, right? I mean, that is kind of true, but the reason I use this pen more is because I like to change from line width to line width really quick and this helps me do that I'm gonna increase the shadows on the sides of the eyes but yeah I, I really like these kind of pens just because of that reason you don't have to change the pen at all when you're working I mean you can use different uh, pen nibs right but at the same time like you don't you don't have to see that you could get these really feathery looking lines here without really trying it's pretty easy it just takes some control so the longer you work with it the, the better it gets and the easier it gets you know and also everybody's style is different so but yeah now let me zoom out a little bit see it begins to click in when you zoom out kind of border of the mask I apologize if my voice isn't loud enough this is as loud as I could talk while I'm drawing
like I'm trying to stay focused while I while I do all this and it's, it's very difficult but I hope everything is uh it's clear enough you know See, I'm just going to lay in these lines really quick, and I know I'm going to black out some of them, and I'm going to darken some of them, so it doesn't really matter. But some of them do show through, and it gives like this interesting texture underneath, underneath, uh, underneath the work, right? Because the thing about the line work is that, for me, it's not the final stage. Like, it's not the last thing I'm doing in the drawing. Like, I'm still going to have another step after this of just, you know, finalizing thing, adding some touches. Maybe I'm going to use charcoal. I don't know. Using color pencil? I'm not sure. And I know it's going to be black and white, but, but still, you could always go in and change the values up. And you don't always have to just end at line work. There's, there's a lot of ways you could solve problems with the drawing. And, you know, you got white out, you got white acrylic, you got, you got a lot of stuff, you know. Don't stay limited to one thing, especially when you don't have to. I mean, when you look at comic books back then, they were really limited to the amount of tools they could use. But today, scanners are so good that it doesn't really matter. You could really use any medium out there for your artwork, you know, comics or not, or whatever it is. Like, everything is reproducible. And, and cameras on most phones today are pretty amazing. I mean, before this phone, I had the S9, and I remember the camera being great on that, but then this phone is a little bit newer, and so, you know, it it feels like the camera is better. And it's pretty impressive, because it's not even that many years apart. Like, it's pretty crazy how technology advances. And when you look at a lot of art back then, it was really limited. The reproduction of it was limited because of the, um, what's it called? The, uh... The technology right because for big pieces they would take pictures of them i think like i remember uh i forgot who it was I was watching this documentary about some artist he used to he used to work on uh was it sports illustrated i think or i forgot what but he used to draw um a lot of sports stuff right and for them to reproduce his image onto the cover what they did was they had to take a picture of it. So you had to ship it in to take a picture. Today, you could do that at home. So you could do whatever you want, right? And then you could adjust the picture the way you want it as the artist when you're reproducing it. So yeah, it's, it's there isn't as much limitation today as there used to be back then. So we could get away with a lot more and there could be more expression than there was back then. So that's always a good thing. But for some reason... You see some art today just looks more limited. And I think that's because of the the way we learn, you know? Like when you're told to do something a specific way, you're you're gonna you're gonna, you know. If you're not mentally flexible enough, you're gonna do it that way. Like when you watch my videos, I don't expect you to follow what I'm doing step for step because that would be dumb. You know? I mean not dumb, but like um it's not you, you know? Do you do your own thing. You can only be watching my stuff just to see, you know, how I do it. And then you could take those techniques and work them your own way. Because I know some people, like, especially when you're young, you like to just copy what you see. And that's actually not a bad thing because you learn a lot that way. That's how I started off. But, to, you know, to copy somebody directly and call it your own work, uh, it's not that it's cheating. It's just, I mean, yeah, if you plagiarize it, that's cheating. But if you... um. If you don't want to grow after that it's okay it's okay to be like a designer right and not really come up with your own thing right because not all design is straight up artwork it's like technical stuff right and that's cool too but if you want to be like an artist you know and do your own thing you have to find your own way to do things and everybody likes different things not everybody likes the same thing right you know when it comes to art everybody's got different tastes so when you explore enough and you do things your own way, you know, it'll be cool. I promise you that. Like once you find your own style 
and it's something that you feel like it looks good, you know? And not just looks good because you convinced yourself it does, but it actually does, you know? And, you know, it's always a good feeling to have. To know that you've contributed something to your own stuff, you know? And that only comes through practice. How many minutes has it been? 46 minutes. Damn, I thought this time's passing by quick. Yeah, I want to add those sharp stuff to the end of the thing. But as you can see, like, my line work is, uh, it's, it's very loose. I don't like tight line work. I just don't. I mean, it's got its time and place, but I like to keep things loose because I use a lot of different supplies and, and mediums. But you see how when it comes to, like, line work on the outside, I'm still like following the rules like i'm making sure that line work is heavy where it needs to be and not heavy where it doesn't need to be but yeah i don't think i'm going to paint this in so i don't really care much about the border but i'm glad i had it in the beginning i mean i could still border it out you know what i'm saying like uh i could have a border behind him and he's in the foreground so that would look cool i'm probably gonna have like a gradient behind him when i when i try to finish it up well, yeah, let's imprint that, that hand and sword. Looks tricky. Eh, it doesn't look too good. But let's have like these, uh, kind of a rope looking thing going in between each finger. I kind of forgot what I was talking about before, but um, yeah, as you can see here, I'm working on the knuckles. But yeah, I'm also listening to music at the same time, it really helps me focus. But then a YouTube ad just threw me off. Man, I really hate YouTube ads. Now that I inked it in, I kind of like it. The hands. So add in like a screw on top of each one. Kind of looks like it's been screwed in there. But the thing about Scorpion, he has to kind of look magical in a way. Because he's like some hell ninja or some something. I don't know. Let's have like these cards on each knuckle. And at the end, I'm going to darken it and like put some, put some like texture and mixed media this thing up you know what i'm saying and uh put in here like you look out you look throughout history a lot of warriors would have different types of rings on each finger for the type of tool that they use it would either improve the grip or whatever you know like some archers would have a ring that would help them hold the was it the arrow or the bow you think it's the arrow yeah it just helps you and stuff so it's not a far-fetched idea now let's do this part here And also, the, another thing about like uh, dip pens like this is that I also hear complaints online where you gotta hold them like a certain way and make sure the ink flows out a certain way. It's like, not really. You just gotta make sure you clean it right and the pen works like a regular pen. I mean, look at this. Like, you could do that with a regular pen. So, I don't know what all the complaints are about sometimes. I think it just comes from a lack of practice and using it just a few times and then just not cleaning it right. And so, you get, you know, some people just get frustrated. That's okay when you're starting stuff out. I mean, that's the whole point of getting better at anything in your life because it helps you deal with frustration in other parts of your life. So you understand, like, frustration is only normal if you don't know how to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You learn how to deal with frustration in one part of your life 
whenever it comes out in another part of your life, you just know how to deal with it. You kind of have the same tools of knowing how to deal with problems. So if you ever get frustrated with these type of pens, try to troubleshoot the issue, you know? Is it like uh, not working because it ain't clean? Because sometimes if the ink dries up on it, the friction builds up and the ink don't flow. So you don't want that. You want everything to flow smoothly. All right. I really like the squiggly lines and stuff. You've been following me for a while now. You know, I kind of just make up lines. Because why not? I want to have a flower design on the hilt, so I'm going to put like roses. It kind of looks like roses if you zoom out or whatever. I mean, it doesn't really look like roses, but whatever. All right. Now we'll have this arm guard here, and I want to add another like sharp object on it, make it look more dangerous and cool. And connect the studs. Make it look like a brittle surface, so when you hit, so like when you hit somebody in the face with it, you know that thing hurts. And then put like a hole on the side or something and then have it wrap around the arm with, with strings or leather, leather strips or whatever. And then just put some shading in it. Now I'm gonna go in the outline the stuff that needs to be outlined some more and you know, deepen up the lines. I'm probably not gonna finish the whole video. I'll try to keep it within an hour, but I wanna really ink in that arm. So maybe this is after he caught his spear while it's, you know, coming back, at, coming back at him or something. Like when he does that move with the spinning and stuff, where he spins the chain spear. I want to have less thickness on this part of the bicep. Okay. And then this tendon here that kind of comes out of the, the armpit. You got the shoulder up here. Let's have, yep, there we go. So I kind of changed the shape of the sleeve hole, right, for the arm. Made it more triangular. Chest over here, kind of just stretches. Then we're gonna have some more armpit muscles or whatever. I really forgot how the anatomy looks like in there. So we'll just put some shading in it. And I know like the those those serratus muscles, the ones that come out from the they kind of connect to the shoulder. And then uh into the obliques and the and the um and the rib cage. Here I'm gonna have pretty much finished with that arm. The lats are coming out of the shirt. So I want to emphasize that any intersection you kind of want to increase the, the, the ink in it. So I'm going to kind of increase the shadows here. I want to make it look like that muscle is, you know, bulging out. So that's going to be the lat muscle here. Now I want to put the shirt around it. I'm 
Let me zoom out a bit. everything connect there all right looking clean looking clean now we're gonna finish this belt i want to have it look rough you know like the thing about scorpion's costume man is it does look clean in the game but i kind of like it where it looks like this dude has been frying in hell for a while so you know his armor gotta look uh, all like you know it's gotta look a little bit uh, you know like it's got some stone on it sulfur residue or stuff you know it's got to smell like fire let's just put a bunch of random scribbles everywhere see what happens <clears throat> now okay so i'll finish off this video some other time but yeah hope you liked what you saw so far um thanks for watching leave any comments below and yeah 50 videos. Let's go. And yeah, thanks for watching. Later.